Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video we're going to look at five semiconductor stocks. The first is advanced micro devices, then analog devices, Micron Technology, NXP, and last is Marvell. Semiconductors are found in thousands of products such as cars, computers, phones, etc. A really important part of an electronic device is the semiconductor. The electronic devices that are sold today have greatly advanced communications, computing, healthcare, military systems, transportation, clean energy, and countless other applications. Companies like Nvidia, AMD, and Qualcomm are fabless, meaning they outsource chip manufacturing. Taiwan Semiconductor is an example of a foundry. Foundries manufacture chips for companies like Nvidia. Some companies do both, like Intel. Let's get started with the model. We're going to start with advanced micro devices and their latest financials are as of 3-31-2022. This is a large cap company, 154 billion market cap, they're trading at $95 a share and they have 1.6 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Look how much their free cash flow grows from under 300 million to 3.3 billion. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That also grows a lot from 340 million to 3.4 billion. Revenue is a sales for the company and that grows each year from 6.7 billion to almost 19 billion. It grew 180% from 2019 to the trailing 12 months. A really important number in a DCF model is the WAC, weighted average cost of capital. This is the discount rate we apply to the future free cash flows. The WAC in Finbox ranges from 7.5% to 8.8%. I'm gonna use the middle WAC for all five companies. So 8.3% is a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 92 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $81 billion. We divide that by 1.6 billion shares. We get a calculated stock price of $50. They're trading at $95, so they're trading at an 89% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Companies provide revenue targets for future years. The revenue target for 2024 is $33 billion. For 2023 is $30 billion. And for 2022 is $26.4 billion. And I continued a similar revenue growth into 2025, so I got $35.4 billion. That's how I got their future revenue estimates. To calculate their future free cash flows, I need to see what percent of their revenue they convert to free cash flow. So I summed up these four free cash flow numbers, and then I divided by the sum of these four revenue numbers. That comes out to 15%. So I multiplied their future revenue estimates by 15%. That's how I got their future free cash flows. The website simply Wall Street values the company at 147. They're saying it's 35% undervalued. 24 analysts priced this stock and the average price target is 132. The low is 98, the high is 200. This is the stock price the last five years. So five years ago, it looks like it was around $15 a share. And then at the end of 2021, it peaked at about 160. But as you know, the market has been crashing the last few months. So the stock is down quite a bit since the top, I think around 40%. It looks like the stock has come up about 10% in the past couple of weeks. So if you bought the stock 10 months ago, you'd pretty much be flat. If you bought it before 10 months ago, you'd be up. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you'd have $144,000 today. That's a 1300% return or 31% annual return. The next company we're gonna look at is Analog Devices. This is a large cap company, 83 billion market cap. They're trading at 159 a share and they have 523 million shares outstanding. Their free cash flow in 2019 was 2 billion. Now it's up to 2.8 billion. Their net income is pretty steady year after year. Their revenue looks good. It grows from 6 billion to 8.4 billion. That's a 41% growth from 2019 
to the trailing 12 months. The middle whack on Finbox for this company is 8.3% and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value which is all cash flows past year for that 75 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of 68 billion dollars. We divide that by 523 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 129. They're trading at 159, so they're trading at a 23% premium. It's a sell according to the model. The company's 2024 revenue target is 12.4 billion. 2023 is 12 billion, and 2022 is 11.3 billion. And my target for 2025 is about 13 billion. The company converts on average 33% of their revenue into free cash flow, so I multiplied their future revenue estimates by 33%. That's how I got their future free cash flows. The website simply Wall Street values the company at 240. They're saying it's 34% undervalued. 11 analysts priced this stock, and the average price target is 202. The low is 183, the high is 225. This is where the stock has been trading the last five years. It peaked at about 190 at the end of 2021. The current stock price is in the low 150s, which is where it was trading in the first quarter of 2021. But before that, it was much lower. So if you bought the stock before the first quarter of 2021, you'd be up. If you bought it two, three years ago, you'd be up a ton. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you'd have $55,000 today. That's a 446% return, or 19% annual return. The next company is Micron. This is a large cap company, 81 billion market cap. They're trading at $72 a share, and they have 1.1 billion shares outstanding. Their free cash flow peaked in the trailing 12 months at close to 5 billion. They had almost no free cash flow in 2020 because they do invest a lot in CapEx. They do a lot of manufacturing and free cash flow is operating cash flow minus capex. Net income also peaks in the trailing 12 months at over 9 billion. Their revenue has grown over the years, but not as much as other semiconductor companies. It's only up 33% from 2019 to the trailing 12 months. The middle whack on Finbox for this company is 7.8%, and that's the discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for, that's 97 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $86 billion. We divide that by 1.1 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $77. They're trading at $72, so they're trading at a 7% discount. It's a buy according to the model. The company's revenue target for 2024 is 44.5 billion. For 2023, it's 41 billion. And for 2022, it's 34 billion. My 2025 revenue target is 48 billion. They convert on average 10% of their revenue into free cash flow. So I multiply their future revenue estimates by 10%. That's how I got their future free cash flows. The website simply Wall Street is at 196. They're saying it's 63% undervalued. 15 analysts price this stock and the average price target is 113. The low is 83, the high is 165. This is where the stock has been trading the last five years. So it looks like it peaked at about 100. Now it's down to 72. It's trading at the levels it was trading at at the end of 2020. So if you bought the stock before the end of 2020, you'd be up right now. But almost any time you bought it after the end of 2020, you'd probably be down. Unless you caught it right at the bottom at this point or this point. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you'd have $120,000 today. That's an 1100% return or a 28% annual return. The fourth of the five companies we're going to look at is NXP. This is a large cap company, 48 billion market cap. They're trading at 182 a share and they have 263 million shares outstanding. Their free cash flow goes up a little bit from 1.7 billion to 2.1 billion. Net income grows a lot from under 300 million to over 2.2 billion. Their revenue goes up slightly from 8.9 billion to 11.6 billion. 
which is a growth of 31%. I gave them the middle whack on Finbox, 8.8%, and that's the discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 50 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $45 billion. We divide that by 263 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 170. They're trading at 182, so they're trading at a 7% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Their revenue target for 2024 is 14.6 billion. For 2023, it's 13.8 billion. And for 2022, it's 13.2 billion. And my target for 2025 is 15.4 billion. That's how I got their future revenue estimates. They convert on average 20% of their revenue into free cash flow. So I multiplied their future revenue estimates by 20%. That's how I got their future free cash flows. The website simply Wall Street values the company at 325. They're saying it's 44% undervalued. 17 analysts price this stock and the average price target is 211. The low is 160, the high is 320. This is where the stock has been trading the last five years. So it looks like it's trading where it was at the very beginning of 2021. It peaked at about 230 at the highest. And then like all stocks, it's been coming down the past few months. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you'd have $83,000 today. That's a 730% return or 24% annual return. The last semiconductor stock we're gonna look at is Marvell. This is a large cap company, 49 billion market cap. They're trading at $58 a share and they have 851 million shares outstanding. Their free cash flow goes up a little bit from 500 million to 630 million. Net income is negative each year except in 2020. Their revenue grew 56% from 2019 to 2022. I gave them the middle whack on Finbox, 8.3%, and that's the discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 28 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $24 billion. We divide that by 851 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $28, they're trading at $58, so they're trading at a 103% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Their revenue target for 2025 is $8.4 billion. For 2024, it's $7.2 billion. And for 2023, it's $6.1 billion. And my target for 2026 is $9.6 billion. That's how I got their future revenue estimates. They converted 16% of their revenue into free cash flow. So I multiplied their future revenue estimates by 16%. That's how I got their future free cash flows. The website simply Wall Street valuation is 59. They're saying it's 3% undervalued. 16 analysts priced this stock and the average price target is 91. The lowest 70, the highest 125. This is where the stock has been trading the last five years. You can see there was a huge run up until the end of 2021. And it looks like the peak was about $90. Then it came crashing down the past few months. It's trading at a similar price as it was in the middle of 2021. So this stock seems a little more stable than the other semiconductors we looked at. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd have $50,000 today. That's a 397% return or a 17% annual return. There are 66 companies in the semiconductor industry. This list shows you the top 20 by market cap. Advanced Micro Devices is the largest company we looked at. They rank fifth in market cap. ADI ranks eighth, then Micron, NXPI, and Marvell. You can see Micron does a lot of manufacturing. They spend over 10 billion in CapEx. The other companies we looked at spend less than average in CapEx. Average is 1.3 billion. NXPI is the most leveraged of all the companies. Their debt to equity ratio is 1.6. That means for every dollar of equity, it has $1.60 of debt. The other four companies have a really low debt to equity ratio. AMD does not pay a dividend, but the other four companies do. NXPI pays 2%, ADI pays 1.9%. Micron and Marvell pay a pretty small dividend. Marvell generated the lowest amount of free cash flow. The other companies are higher than average. The only company that's worse than average in price to book is NXPI. Look how good Micron's ratios are. PE below nine, price to free cash flow below 17, and a price to sales below three. AMD and ADI have a worse price to earnings, price to free cash flow, and price to sales than the average. 
Same thing with Marvell. We can't look at that price to earnings since it's negative, and that price to free cash flow is really bad. 78, the average is 29. It looks like NXPI has decent ratios. Three of the four are better than average. Marvell's revenue is only 4.5 billion, which is lower than average. The other three are a lot higher than average. Micron's revenue is really high, over 31 billion. The reason their stock isn't higher is because their three year annual revenue growth rate is only 1%. Look at AMD, 46%. ROA is net income over assets. It's how well the company uses assets to generate a profit. AMD is 13%. Micron is really good at 15%. NXPI is high as well at 11%. Analog Devices is kind of low at 3%. And Marvell is negative since they have negative net income. ROE is net income over equity. It's how well you use your equity to generate a profit. AMD, MU, and NXPI are really good in that category. ADI is lower than average, and Marvell is negative. This chart tracks all five company stock prices the past five years. The black line is AMD, which you can easily see. The blue line is Marvell, but the green line, yellow line, and red line kind of merge together. It's a little difficult to see where they go. The green is MU, the red is NXPI, and the yellow is ADI. The company that performed the best was AMD, the stock has grown 750%. They're also the only company that does not pay a dividend. One way to boost your stock price is not to pay a dividend. Marvell performed the second best at 280%, then Micron 140%, ADI 109%, and NXPI 71%. So to summarize, only one stock I calculated as undervalued, Micron. The other four I calculate as overvalued. But the analysts say all the stocks are undervalued, and simply Wall Street says they're even more undervalued. Their price targets are higher in every single category. Except Marvell. Simply Wall Street is lower than the analyst target at Marvell. There's more to valuing a stock than a DCF model. You have to somehow predict the future of the company, which is a really difficult thing to do. The DCF uses the past information to predict the future. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.